Hi, this is Modi X by Yamaha. It's the less expensive, more portable version of their flagship Montage synth. It has the same exact synth engine as its bigger brother, but at a price range which makes it a very interesting player in today's synth market. There's a lot going on in Modi X. In this video, I'll look at the most important things you need to know to figure out if this synth is for you. Let's start by looking at some basic terms. A performance consists of everything that you can do simultaneously with the Modi X. The song I played in the intro to this video is all one performance. All the sounds you can make at any given time simultaneously, drums, piano, electric guitar, and more, keyboard splits and layers, all the arpeggios or beats or sequences, and automation or motion control for these sounds, all the scenes, which are different parameter states or stages of a song, all the effects you can apply to these songs, all that is contained in one performance. And you can swap all those in and out as you please, of course. A performance can have up to 16 parts, and each part can use either the FM or the sample engine. Now, you can make great music on the Modi X without drilling down into the parts to see how the synth engine works, but you'd be missing out on a lot. So let's dive in and take a quick look at them, and then zoom back out. A sound starts on the Modi X from one of two core sound engines, either the sample or AWM2 engine, or the FMX engine, the FM synthesis-based engine. You can also create presets where every key is a different drum or sample, and the Modi X also supports general MIDI-based presets, but these two don't add a core sound type. So with that said, let's start by looking at the sample engine. The sample-based engine, called AWM2, can play either one-shot samples or samples that have looping points that can go on for basically as long as you hold a note. Built in are recordings of thousands of real-world instruments and sounds like pianos, flutes, drums, and so on, and you can also import your own samples from a USB drive if you like. There are no onboard tools that help you make looping samples like this one, but there's a pretty good third-party tool that helps you set and fade looping points in your sample. So let's dive in and take a look at what a sample part looks like. I can dive in by hitting either Edit Here or Edit Here which brings you to this screen which has all the top level menu items for samples as well as the sub tabs or sub pages for each of them. Each sample based part lets you load up to eight different elements, eight different samples which can be completely different samples. Now each of these elements has its own independent control. I can't go over everything obviously, but I will look at some of the ones that I think are the most interesting. For example, on a per element basis, you can choose what note range it will play at and what velocity range it will play at. So if we look at all the elements, clicking here, you can see how they're split across the keyboard. Now this is a basic initial preset, but if I go into a slightly more complex one, let's say this one, and then dive in again to edit the part, you can tell that this piano part activates different samples based on the velocity based on how hard you hit a note. There are also certain samples that will only play at different note ranges. Now, elements don't have to be just different versions of the same sample, they can be completely different samples. So, for example, if I load up the initial preset again, this is a simple piano patch, and again, I go ahead and edit it. I'll go into element 2, and then say load up a, um, let's search for a cello here. This one looks good. And if I activate this element, I now have a cello layered on my piano. Once I've got my samples in, I can manipulate them in ways you'd expect to see in typical synths with filters, LFOs, and envelopes. For example, if I wanted the cello to come in a little bit slower, I would go into 
element 2's amplitude envelope, which is right here, and then just increase the attack. That way I can give the piano its space and then have the cello come in a little bit later. Now in case you're worried that this just plays samples and isn't a real synth with synth style waveforms, I can always go in, I'll just turn off these two elements, and then bring in a new one. Again, there's so many waveforms here, you can easily search by category, synth lead, let's just choose, let's say this one. Oh, I forgot to turn it on. Each part has a little bit of reverb send by default. I can turn that off and just hear the sound raw. Other than the core oscillator and multi-stage amplitude envelope, each sample engine element also contains, and if I go back to the individual element, contains a pitch envelope with plenty of configurable parameters, including curve type, if you're into that kind of thing. You can actually get some pretty snappy envelopes out of this pitch envelope generator. Each element also comes with a dedicated multi-mode filter with numerous filter types, including a few filters with an analog style filter emulation, which sounds quite nice. With resonance, of course, as well. Each element also comes with a built-in element LFO. This element level LFO is pretty simple. It has three shapes and is designed to let you quickly modulate pitch, filter, or amplitude parameters. It also has nice delay and fade in parameters, which lets you gradually bring it in to modulate whatever it is you're trying to change. Finally, each element on the element level comes with its own EQ and you can choose either a two-band or parametric EQ with relatively nice controls over frequency, gain, and the Q. So, everything I talked about up until now, oscillator controls, pitch envelope, filter with dedicated envelope control, amp envelope, element LFO, and element EQ, all of those are on the element level, and can be controlled individually for each of the eight elements in a part. One level above the part elements are the part common controls. Here too, you have a few high level menu items and then a few tabs in each menu. Again, there are a lot of parameters here. I won't go through all of them. We saw the reverb send, and there's also a send to an additional master effect, which applies to all the parts. Now, while we're on the topic of effects, aside from these two master effects sends, each part has its own two individual additional insert effects. Now, the amount of effects on the Modex is truly overwhelming. I'll just go through these effects very briefly. You can see that each effect has its own individual parameters. Let's keep... Let's try this. Choruses. Flangers. Phasers. Let's go through. Distortions. Cool. Compressors. Wah. Let's do... Again, these are quite nice. Pitch change. That also works really nicely. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of effects that you can choose from. The common part also lets you control the part arpeggio, the motion sequencing with its four lanes, and it has its own mod matrix, including a part LFO, which has many more options compared to the element LFO, as well as actually editing your own LFO to customize it any way you like. 
and it also gives you access to the parts control assign tab which is where most of the mod matrix action happens now the effects arpeggios motion sequencers and mod control which i'll talk about all these later on all apply to the fm engine as well so let's take a look at that and then zoom out to uh, these three So the FM engine, called FMX, is based on the capabilities of Yamaha's classic DX7 synth, but enhanced with more operators, algorithms, and oscillator shapes. Let's zoom in and take a look at that. In a nutshell, FM synthesis is kind of like the opposite of subtractive synthesis. Rather than starting with a harmonically rich waveform, like a sawtooth or pulse or sample of a cello, and filtering it, you start out with a lonely single frequency sine wave which has no harmonics and add harmonics and complexity to it by rapidly modulating its frequency with another oscillator. Each FMX part can have up to eight oscillators or operators as they're called in FM lingo and they can be connected to each other in different ways or different algorithms. Now, don't let the word algorithm scare you off though. It's just a fancy word for different ways of placing oscillators either in parallel or one before another. The simplest algorithm is probably algorithm number one, where each of the oscillators is simply routed out for you to hear. There is a slight twist to it, this little squiggle here, which tells you that you can apply feedback to oscillator one to make it sound like this. So in this algorithm, if I wanted to bring in another oscillator or operator alongside this one, I would just increase its level. Now we can't hear it because it's just playing at the same frequency, but if I were to change its frequency, right, two oscillators playing in parallel according to this algorithm. Now, like I said, where FM synthesis gets interesting is where you take one oscillator or operator and modulate another. So if I choose another algorithm, let's say, Algorithm number six, just ignore everything going on from three, four, and on to the right. Let's just focus on oscillator one, changing the frequency of oscillator two. I'll go back into oscillator one. Again, I'm not calling them operators yet because I haven't made them operate or do anything. Notice how operator two doesn't sound quite normal anymore. That's because oscillator one is affecting its frequency. If I were to bring down the level of oscillator one, then oscillator two or operator two is back to normal. Bring it back up. You can see how the timbre of oscillator two changes. Now, an oscillator becomes an operator when you attach an envelope to it, which means you change how operator one affects operator two over time with an envelope. So if I increase the attack a bit, we can make this change gradual. Which brings us to what I was saying before. We can start out with a simple sine wave and then gradually add harmonics to it. Open it up and then close it back down. Now in this algorithm, operator one is modulating operator two. Uh, operator one will be called the modulator, operator two the carrier because we're not hearing operator one anymore. We're only hearing what it does to operator two. By the way, check out what happens if we bring back the feedback to operator one. This is how it sounds without feedback. Now let's take it to the max. Quite different. Modix has another trick up its sleeve where it doesn't just rely on sine waves, but rather you can choose a few different shapes for your operators. For example, one that has all the harmonics and to hear them, we'll need to add some skirt to it. Or you can choose a shape that just has the odd harmonics. Sounds like a, sort of like a square wave. And then some with a little bit of resonance. So those are FMX operator basics. Let's zoom out to the common level. You've got overall part pitch control, and you can also add same filters that we saw before, as well as a filter envelope and same two insert effects per part and arpeggio motion sequencer and mod matrix 
including a complex LFO with a lot of options like we saw before, and a simpler second LFO, similar to the sample engines per element LFO. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of the two different synth engines in the Modi X, both the FM engine and the sample engine, let's take a closer look at modulation. Many of the Modi X parameters, like a filter's cutoff, the amount of distortion, or a sound's pitch, can all be changed over time or modulated in Modi X in three different ways. Manually, via various physical controls like assign knobs, assign buttons, the super knob, the mod wheel, or external pedals. Then the second way is using predefined patterns using LFOs and envelopes like we saw before, or the built in motion sequencers, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then the third option is changing parameters dynamically using envelope followers, or basically audio levels. Any modulation outside the core element, LFO, and envelope controls happens on the part or the overall performances common screens, and in particular on the control assign tab, which is this synth's version of a mod matrix. A quick way to assign a control to a parameter is using the control assign button. So if I dig in, for example, to this parts pitch controls, right? Let's say that I wanted to change this with this knob. All I'd need to do is hit the control assign button, then this screen turns up and turn this knob. And from this point on, this assignable knob controls my pitch. Now the way you know if you can apply modulation to a parameter is as you sort of touch these buttons, you can tell that the control assign button is on where you can assign a control to this parameter and it's off in cases that you can't. Now remember I said you can assign three sources to parameters, physical controls, motion sequence lanes, and the envelope follower. And as you may have noticed indeed when I hit the control assign button, you can see that I can either turn a knob, select one of the motion sequencer lanes, or select one of the envelope followers. More on these two in a bit, let's go back to this knob and see what we can do in this mod matrix. So one of the first choices you may want to make is polarity. As long as it's unipolar, then changing this knob will only take the pitch in this case up from the core parameter. But if I move it into the bipolar realm, then I can go down or up. Now notice if I turn this knob counterclockwise, it goes down. If I turn it clockwise, the pitch goes up. I could invert this curve if I wanted, and now it will work the other way around. Turning it counterclockwise will increase the pitch, turning it clockwise will reduce it. Remember, this applies not just to physical knobs, but also to the motion sequencers and the envelope followers. Now you can choose whether the curve is linear or not, but another really interesting feature here is that you can completely change the shape of the curve to quite a few crazy shapes. I can sort of scroll through them here. What this means is that as I turn the knob now, the pitch value won't just go from the lowest to highest or vice versa, but rather go through all these different phases. And if you wanted, you could also make your own curve types. Just hop into edit curve type and change this any way you want it. And as you do, it will be reflected Oops. in the little screen here. Now, once you're in the mod matrix or control assign screen, you have access to all the other modulations in that particular part. So I could add another one if I wanted, choose any destination I wanted. So plenty of insert effects parameters here, part parameters, and individual element parameters. So let's say that I wanted to control uh, let's say the elements pan, and I wanted to control it with a sign. Oh, let's do it with the mod wheel. 
pretty straightforward. Don't forget to go bipolar, which is appropriate for panning. There's also a neat feature here. If I click auto select, it will show me whatever a knob does just by turning it. So this controls the pitch. And if I touch the mod wheel, you can see it controls the element pan. Okay, so we just assigned a few physical controls to any parameters we wanted. Let's take a look at the two other mod source types, the envelope followers and motion sequencers. So let's go back to the pitch parameter. Now, remember I can control this with this knob, but I want to assign another control to it, which is the envelope follower. Now I can use any of the other parts, but since I don't have anything in the other parts, I will choose the AD input. Now I happen to have a microphone here. If I turn on the input and then hit a note, you can see that as I touch the microphone or perhaps even speak into the microphone, as this picks up audio, it impacts or modulates the pitch parameter. Now this could be used for any number of interesting effects like for example, connect it to your drummer's kick drum and use it as sidechain or have the audio from any other part modulate any other parameter in very interesting ways that are rhythmically relevant. So that's the envelope follower as a mod source. The last mod source in the Modi X is the motion sequencer. Each part can have four motion sequencing lanes. I'll turn one on. Now this is basically like an advanced configurable LFO. In order that we may hear its impact, I'll go back into the mod matrix. I'll add another modulation slot. Now the source for this slot is going to be, let's look for it, motion sequencer lane one. And as a destination, I'm going to pick the same course pitch parameter. So now that we have this set up, I'll go back into motion sequencer lane one and motion sequencing is something you need to turn on. Otherwise you won't hear it. And now if I hit a key, you can see this motion sequencer impacting the pitch. You can sync the motion sequencer to your song. And of course the power of motion sequencing that makes it more than an LFO is the fact that you can edit it on a granular level. So I can change depth on a per step basis. And you can also use these sliders to do it quickly. And if I reduce the number of steps in the sequence, it'll be quite obvious what's going on. Each of the steps can either be pulse type A or pulse type B. There are quite a variety of pulse types to choose from. You can sort of see them here as I scroll through it. It's, uh, you can create ratchets this way. I can change part A as well. Again, it's easier to see if I just go through these. So it's quite annoying with pitch, but I think you get the idea. Again, I'm using pitch just to make the changes really obvious, but you can apply this to any effect you like, uh, filter cutoff, of course, any one of the hundreds of parameters on this synth. And like I mentioned before, motion sequencers have a global on off button. So if you want to stop the madness, it's quite easy to do that. Okay, so we covered the regular knobs. What's the deal with the super knob? Well, there are a few things that are special about it, aside from the colorful blinking bottom part that glows to the beat of your song. The first is that it can control not only multiple parameters directly, but it can also control any one of the assignable knobs, which in turn can control multiple parameters themselves. Another nice thing about it is that you can tell its position with the ring of LEDs around it, something that the assignable encoders have on the montage, but don't on the Modi X. So for example, I've got this piano sound and I can gradually morph it to an electric piano sound and back. And finally, once you've set the super knob up to control any parameters you want, you can actually automate the super knob's motion itself as a modulation destination.
Notice how in this preset, it's literally moving the assign knobs along with it. This is also a nice preset that leverages a self-moving super knob. One of the things that struck me as odd as I opened the Modiex's manual was the claim that it had over 10,000 arpeggiators. I mean, up until that point, I thought 10 or 20 was a lot. But arpeggiators in Modiex are quite unlike what you may be used to on other synths. So if I dive into this part and edit it, hit the arpeggio tab, I can go ahead and select any one of, and there's a search for it because there are so many, over 10,000 arpeggios. The arpeggiator is also a global function. You can turn on or off. And once you turn it on, this is quite unlike anything you may have heard. Pretty nice, right? And that's just one. So you can either just scroll through the list and audition them one by one, or you can search by main and subcategories. Now, since there are so many of those, you can obviously favorite any one of them and keep them around for easy and quick access, like this one, which is the basic standard, what you would expect of an arpeggiator. But you can start simple and quickly take off from there. You may have noticed some of the arpeggiators are just one-shot sequences. If they've got an N here, it means it can just do its own thing and don't bother it. Though you can transpose it. And you can actually create your own patterns and if you want, have the built-in engine intelligently adapt the patterns to the chords you play later. So let's do this briefly. There's a built-in uh, feature for recording MIDI songs or audio files. And you can also import your own MIDI patterns that you create with a DAW externally. There's a USB drive in the back. You plug it in and load up a song. But more interestingly, you can create your own patterns. So let's say, for example, take that simple pattern, which I can play back if I want, but it's good enough. I click here, tap user ARP, give it a name, Let's say, cheesy demo. Now I can save this as one of three arpeggio types. Fixed will just play back the original pattern I played regardless of which key I hit. Original notes will play back the same notes that I played but transpose them based on the key that I hit. And then normal is the least normal option which activates the Modiex's built-in chord arpeggiator AI engine. So let's do that and then store as user ARP. So now if I go back to my part and edit it back into arpeggios and then click here and find my user cheesy demo, turn on the arpeggiator. Now check this out. If I hit one note, it just has one note to go on. But if I start playing more notes and even more notes, I start getting my original pattern. But if I change the chord, it changes along with it. How crazy is that? And of course, you are welcome to create your own non-cheesy patterns. So you can treat this as a smart arpeggiator or as a sequencer on steroids. I think this is one of the most interesting features of the Modi X and the montage, of course. And you can run up to eight of these simultaneously, one per part. 
Now, unfortunately, there is no built-in step or piano roll style sequencer as of version 1.1 of the OS. So you need to either import MIDI files created in a DAW through uh, the USB drive or record your arpeggio live. Thankfully, there's a quantization option to help with timing. Now, there is a touch screen here, so hopefully at some point in the future, we'll see a piano roll style sequencer. But for now, either record a pattern and convert it or load in a USB file. One more important thing to mention about arpeggios, they're not just note or chord sequences, they can also be rhythm sequences, which you can add to your performance by hitting the rhythm pattern button. You choose a kit, and then you're off to selecting the pattern you want. You can audition them, cycle through the patterns. Quite a lot of options there. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk a bit about part controls. Once you've got all your parts in place, you have a few facilities for mixing and layering parts. You access the mixer from the main performance screen, and it has a nice bird's eye view of the effects, sends, EQ options, mute and solo options, and also panning and levels. The main performance screen, which is sort of like the main homepage for the Modi X, also has a view which lets you see the various layers and splits. And here on the part level, just like on the element level, you can split up the keyboard either by note or by velocity. So I can choose whether a part plays or not based on the velocity with which I hit a key. I think that this layering capability based on split and level speaks volumes, if you don't mind the pun, about how serious Yamaha are about enabling deep and complex soundscapes. When I first heard that Modi X has 192 voice polyphony, 128 sample voices and 64 FM voices, I thought it was a bit over the top. But its multi-part, multi-layer functions, along with how easy it is to just keep adding various layers and sequences, means that all those extra voices can actually come in quite handy. <laughs> With thousands of presets, sample types, arpeggiators, and drum patterns, it's crucial to be able to find what you're looking for quickly, and luckily there are pretty good facilities for that. As we saw before, you can narrow your search by main category and subcategory. Green presets, by the way, load up as one part, and blue presets load up with multiple parts. And you can quickly audition the presets using the audition button. Okay, okay, don't play that well. Joking aside, the audition can actually be a quite useful way to get to know a preset, and some of the audition options, like this one, are pretty neat in that they cycle through the various parts. For example, here we're auditioning different amps in this guitar preset. And if you find something you like, you can stick with it. The live set feature, by the way, lets you create pages of shortcuts to performances and you can arrange these any way you like. And aside from the onboard presets, Yamaha has opened up a community preset sharing site called soundmondo.com where you can search for inspiring presets or just find a preset for a song you want to play with your friends. For example, the obligatory Jump from Van Halen. As your song starts to come together, scenes are a great way to quickly change a lot of parameters quickly. For example, change your arpeggio types, motion sequencer types, mute or solo tracks, and change many other parameters. For example, in the song I played in the beginning of this clip, I had three scenes for each of the three parts of the song and different tracks were muted or not based on what I was playing and different levels and parameters changed as I switched scenes. 
you've got eight scenes per performance in total, and you can tell which scenes have content in them by the fact that they are dimly lit. Moving on, Modex can also be used as an audio interface with 10 mono or 5 stereo channels out and 4 in. You can determine on a per part basis which outputs it gets sent to, so that you can record them separately into your DAW and then apply additional effects to them or rebalance your mix. Let's take a quick physical tour of Modex. The 7 inch screen is nicely viewable from multiple angles. As we saw before, you can select parameters by either touching them or moving up and down with the arrow keys. You've got quick shortcuts here to various screens, access to live sets and storing performances, as well as a shortcut to part, mute, and solo. On the left, you've got four assignable knobs, which you can toggle with to control eight tracks or use to change various parameters like tone parameters or arpeggiator swing, timing, and motion sequencer options. The faders let you control either part levels or element or operator levels. And a performance has overall eight parts that you can control with a keyboard and then eight additional parts that you can either control with MIDI or sequence with arpeggiators. On the far left are controls for master volume and audio coming out of your computer if you use the Modex as an audio interface and an on off and gain for the external AD inputs. There are assign buttons in addition to the assign knobs, which you can use to change parameters in your parts. On the back are MIDI in and out ports, two foot switch and two expression pedal inputs, stereo speaker and headphones out, and two audio inputs, which you can use to send audio to your computer, apply any one of the effects to, and use as a source for the envelope follower, as I showed you before, and also tempo sick, and coolest of all, if you have a microphone around, as a vocoder. Okay, let's summarize by looking at some pros and cons. On the pros side, Modex is a great sounding, highly versatile synth offered at a very competitive price. The raw sample and FM sound engines are fantastic, and the amount and quality of the effects won't disappoint you. The modulation options are a sound designer's dream, and the ability to play multiple sequences or arpeggios simultaneously means there are very few limits on what you can do. On the cons side, Modex is definitely not a knob per function synth. There's quite a learning curve, which is to be expected with such a complex synth, and even if you know what you want to get to, it's quite often a few clicks away. That said, with the amount of parameters here, a knob per function approach just wouldn't be practical. It's obvious that the amount of controls were reduced to help lower costs, especially compared to the montage, but where I think it's felt most is with the reduced amount of faders and assignable knobs, four more of each would have been very helpful. The touchscreen interface is very readable, but sometimes gets a bit sluggish and is a bit of a downgrade if you compare it to today's tablet and cell phone touchscreens. You do get used to it after a while, but it's not as snappy and precise as cell phone screens. And that said, there are phones that cost more than Modi X these days, so I guess this is an acceptable compromise. The keyboard is very good, but it doesn't have aftertouch. The mod matrix, however, does support aftertouch detection if you want to pair Modi X with an external keyboard with aftertouch. Finally, it would be really nice to either have a fast workflow to putting MIDI files on the Modi X or a piano roll style sequencer built in. In summary, Yamaha's Modi X is a sonic sequencing and performance beast capable of creating pretty much any soundscape you can imagine. Whether playing with your hands or playing on its own or any combination of the two, it's a strong entry into the sub $1,500 synth marketplace well worth taking a look at. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. Hit like if this video was useful and subscribe if you want to see more. And check out my book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching.